At the end of the lesson, you are expected to identify information theory, you recognize the ways of quantifying information transfer, and show appreciation towards the application of information theory. We will learn about information theory. So what makes this concept more interesting is the fact that it has changed the world forever and it marked the dawn of digital information. So the first question I believe that would come to your mind is that what is an information theory then? Information theory is actually a branch of applied mathematics that quantifies the amount of information that is present in a signal. So for example, you re receive a certain signal from person A and then that message that you received would likely or would unlikely contain the original information. And the best question to ask then would be how much information is retained by the message that you receive based on the original information. So as far as machine learning is concerned, it finds application in continuous random variables, but only when message length interpretations do not apply. So what does this mean? So remember that we calculate an expected length of certain messages taken from specific or specific probability distributions. So in a few moments, we will have different means of quantifying lengths. So if you would like to know more about probability distributions, I have lessons about that. And I suggest you watch them for better understanding of this lesson. So the link is given in the description below. But because I think it would be hard for us to understand the calculation if you do not know how to compute for pr probability distributions. So knowledge on this kind of topic this concept is very important for you to be able to deeply understand information theory. Okay, so the basic idea behind this is that learning about something that is unlikely has happened contains more information than the one that likely has happened. So we have here two words. It is likely, I need to write here, we have likely versus unlikely okay so we said that likely has less information and unlikely has more information so what is the meaning of this so for better understanding let's have these two statements so we have the first statement the dog barks and the second statement the dog across the street parks. So which statement do you think contains more information? Five seconds. So what is your answer? Of course we are not counting the number of words in a sentence because if we're going to count the number of words in each sentence, of course number two would be the winner. Okay? But Information theory does not work like that. We have to go deeper between and behind the words. So in this case, although number two has more words than number one, still number two is the sentence that contains more information. So in short, this sentence is very informative than this statement. So why is this so? So everybody knows and expects that naturally all dog barks or all dogs bark, okay? So this is likely, okay, here, we said before likely statement or likely events have less information. So the dog barks, of course, the, this is expected for every dog, right? But then when there are many dogs around you and you have to identify, specifically identify which one among the dogs around you barks at a certain time of the day. So then maybe you would like to create another length of information. And then that this creation of a certain length of information 
would rush you to investigate and make some kind of relay of information, right? So in this case, this would be unlikely that the dog across the street barks, okay? Because you have to gather more information, right? So with this, it is very important to quantify information so that our basic idea is formalized. So when we say formalization of ideas, what do we mean? So in this case, we're going to talk about some of the properties for certain information to be formalized. Okay. So the first one is that likely events have low information context. And this is what we have said. So this is also pertains to those events that have 100% guarantee of happening. So it may happen, it may not happen. It could be zero, it could be one. We will have that one later. That is number one. Then let's go to number two. Less likely events have higher information. Less likely, or we could say unlikely. Okay, these events have higher information. Then we have number three, independent events. Independ or independent events provide additional information. So what do we mean when we say additional information? So for example, we have a coin and we toss it. Okay. Then you toss a coin twice. Remember you toss a coin twice and you get head. And then you get heads for both events. And then this means that you also have twice as much information than when you get only one head for two events. So how do we then quantify information in such a way that these three things are satisfied? So let me begin by saying that this equation, this equation satisfies the three things. So we have likely events less likely events, and then we have independent events. So we have the information x is equal to the negative log of px. But then later we will know that this is actually uh, explained or described in three categories or three formulas, three concepts of quantifying information. But I want to point out that our natural log logarithm of ix is written in units of knots. One knot is the amount of information gained by observing an, an event of probability i over e. So take note that we have or that we use log to mean the natural logarithm with base e. Okay, so don't forget that. That's basic, basic thing. It is a foundation of understanding more about proper uh, information theory. So we are going to talk about the three situations for quantifying informations depending on what kind of event that we are studying. So let's go first to the first one, Shannon entropy. So what is this? So using Shannon entropy, we can quantify the amount of uncertainty in an entire probability. So this is denoted by these mathematical statements. So Shannon entropy of the random variable x is equal to the expectation of ix with respect to px. So finally, we have the negative expectation of the log of px with respect to px. So a Shannon entropy of a distribution is the expected amount of information in an event drawn from a certain distribution. So in this case, when an event is nearly deterministic, let me repeat that, when an event is nearly deterministic or you know exactly what is going to happen or what is not going to happen, 
the entropy is low. So that falls on likely, right? Remember the first property? Let me go back for a while. The first property is likely. So this contains low information. When it is closer to normal, which means it is somewhat 50% chance of happening and 50% chance of not happening, then the information that may contain is high. So let's have this illustration for better understanding. So we said likely and then less likely. So these are the two words that we should not forget. So this is one. So it means that there is 100% that a certain event is going to happen. So this is very likely or absolute likely. So this is low. The information here is very low. And here, the event here is not going to happen. So the information here is very low. It's the lowest now. So we're going to go to which one it has the highest information. So of course, we have to go to the mean. So when we say the mean, it's the middle. So it's somewhere here, right? Let me put a mark. It's somewhere here. So this one, the one that I put a mark here from this point to this point, are the points that are almost in normal distribution. So it means that they are almost a straight line. So in this case, the distribution is normal. So which means that the information is high. So while the points go down from this point going to this point, the entropy also goes down. And also from this point and to this going to this point, the entropy also goes down until it becomes zero. Okay? So near zero or zero from this point going going to this point these are what we call being deterministic that something is not going to happen and from this point going to this point it is deterministic that something is really going to happen so as it goes closer again it's getting low and also for this one okay i think we are settled with that so when x is a continuous variable, the Shannon entropy is known as the differential entropy. I want to write that so you could properly see. So differential entropy. Again, when x is a continuous variable, the Shannon entropy is known as the differential entropy. Okay, so what if we have two separate probability distributions? So are we going to use this one, the entropy or the Shannon entropy? Of course not. We're going to have a different way of quantifying such information when we have two separate probability distributions. Okay, first and foremost, let's understand what these two probability distributions mean by drawing how it looks like. Okay, it looks like this. Okay, so first distribution, second distribution, or it could be something like this. Okay, so later we will have that, how this kind of shape would come out. Okay, so here it means that we have Px and then we have Qx. So we measure this using the callback or callback Leibler or KL divergence. So this is shown by this equation. So callback Leibler divergence of P and P and Q is and then this is equal to the expectation of the log of Px minus the log of Qx. 
so with respect to px so here kl divergence is zero let me write that K kl divergence is zero if and only if p and q belong to the same distribution so this is the case of discrete variables so in the case of continuous variables it must be equal almost everywhere so kl divergence is non-negative let me write that it is non-negative it is non-negative and it measures the difference between two distributions p and q so in our case as what i've said we have p and q so kl divergence seems to measure distance between distributions so technically this is not a distance because our distribution is not symmetric as you could see in here so this is not symmetric this means that our result varies depending on our choice because when we have d k l p q or we could choose d k l or the the the, the divergent callback libler divergence of p and q or we have q and p of course the the result would depend on what we're going to choose and of course the, the shape also would depend on which one would, would come first is it q or is it q or is it p it, it depends so we also have cross entropy so this one cross entropy which is similar to callback libler okay so it quantifies information using this statement so we have okay entropy pq is equal to uh, the negative right you can see here the negative expectation of p log q x so as you could see this term or this statement lacks the term on the left so what is missing let's examine so here we could we have px but in this case we don't have right so we have p log q x and then we omit the px okay so why do we do this why do we omit the px what is this so in this case we minimize the kl convergence by minimizing the cross into p with respect to q and the reason is q does not have any effect or participation in p which is the omitted term what is this for why do we have to study this entropy is used for automatic decision to reconstruction so we do feature selection in each step cross entropy is used in comparing two probability distributions it describes how similar these distributions are in deep learning architectures like convolutional neural networks or cnn the final output softmax layer most often utilizes cross entropy loss function in bayesian networks mutual information is used to learn relationship structure between random variables and this defines the strength of the relationship after all being said and done let's try this how do we quantify information why do we quantify information leave your comments or leave your answers in the comment below do not forget to subscribe like and share please click the bell button to be notified every time we have a new session see you in the next lesson